Audacity has many options to make your recordings sound fantastic. Here in this level 3 tutorial, let's talk about more specialized effects and adding multiple tracks. Before we begin today, you'll need to make sure you have some audio to work with. I'll use what I recorded in a previous tutorial. You could also bring in an existing sound effect or music, which is discussed in the previous tutorial. Once you have your clip ready, let's move on. Two effects that were not discussed in the previous tutorial are change speed and change tempo. Many people interchange the words speed and tempo, but the effects in Audacity give you different results. Let's take a look at them. First, I'm going to highlight a section of my recording here so that I can apply an effect to it. I'll go up to the effect menu, and let's start first with change speed. This effect will change how fast or slow your recording plays and will also affect the pitch of the recording. It has really only one option to change, and that is with the percentage slider here in the center. By going into negative numbers, you are choosing to slow down the speed and lower the pitch of your recording. And when you go into positive numbers, you're going to speed up and raise the pitch. Play around with the numbers until you get a setting that you're happy with. You can always click the preview button to hear what your recording is going to sound like before you make a definite choice. And once you're happy with what you're looking for, click OK to accept the change. Now let's take a look at the change tempo setting. We'll go up to our effect menu and click change tempo. This effect will only change how fast or slow your recording goes, but will not change the pitch. You have three different ways to apply this effect. You can use the percentage option, as in the previous effect, and it has the same basic idea here. If you move into negative numbers, you're going to slow down your recording. And if you go into positive numbers, it is going to speed up your recording. A second way you change it is to use the beats per minute. If you're familiar with musical terminology, beats per minute is what is commonly referred to as the tempo of a song, or how many beats you count per minute of the music. If you know what the beats per minute currently is of your song or of your recording, you could enter a number in there, and then you could change the number of beats per minute to something specific, and you'll notice that the percentage is automatically adjusted for what has been inputted there. The third way is also to apply the effect by picking how long you want your recording to be. The current length is already filled in for you and you cannot change that. But if you know how long you want your recording to be, you can simply type in that amount of time and it will adjust the other numbers accordingly, percentage and beats per minute, to make your recording the length that you want it to be. Once you're happy with what you've got, you click OK and your recording will be changed. Now there are also some other options on the main menu that will let you change how your recording sounds. Up here on our main toolbar, we have two arrows pointing to each other, and this is known as the Envelope Tool. This will let you pinpoint volume changes in specific sections of your recording. To use this, click on the Envelope Tool. You'll notice the look of our screen has changed slightly. Then we'll go down onto our recording where we want the volume to change. Here, I'm going to click where I would like the change to start, and you'll notice that some little white boxes appeared. I'm going to click where I want the volume to return to normal and I'll put a third box in the middle which I can then click with my left mouse button and drag. You'll notice that it's starting to look a little bit different here. Your volume in this location will now dip down and then increase to reflect the effect you added as we've done here. Normal volume, decrease, and here it increases back to the volume level from before. Finally, let's look at working with multiple tracks. I'm going to move ahead a little bit here in my recording. You may need to record your voice again, mix in other voices, or add music to your voice. After you have something recorded, as soon as you click record, a new track will be started. And I'll show you this example here. When I click record, you'll notice a new track has started. So I'll stop that, and I really didn't want that to record, so I'm going to click the X on the left-hand side to delete that. Another option, besides just clicking the record button, is also to add a pre-recorded track or perhaps some music. Depending on which version of Audacity you have will depend on where you go to import sound. I'm using version 1.3, so to do this, I will click on File, 
and import and then audio. In the window that opens I will need to find a file to include. I'm going to go under my music folder here and I have a piece of royalty free music here on the computer. I'm going to click to select that and I'm going to click open. Audacity supports many different types of audio files including mp3s and WAV files. It usually takes it a little bit for Audacity to bring your file in because it has to encode it for something that Audacity is going to recognize. Once Audacity has converted your sound file, you'll see it appear as a brand new line here in your recording. You may find the clip that you've added needs to be moved or changed in some way. As you'll notice here, the speech I've recorded is very short where the music is very, very long. There are two things you can do that are easy fixes. First, you can delete parts that you don't want or need. I'm going to go back up to the toolbar and pick our selection tool. And I'm going to highlight quite a bit of this song as I won't need all of it. And once I have it highlighted, I'm simply going to hit the delete key on the keyboard. And you'll notice that that portion has gone away, making it much, much easier to manage. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit just so that we can see our recording spread out just a little bit. Another option you have is to use what is known as the time shift tool on the main toolbar. It's this double headed arrow right up here. What this will let you do is move a clip earlier or later. And all you need to do is click on that tool up in the toolbar. Then go down onto the clip that you would like to move. And I'm going to choose to move my speech a little bit later so my music has had a chance to play. I'll click with my left button drag that forward and you're going to see that the clip is then going to move later on in the recording. There are several other effects you can add and ways you can change the recording but that's all that we're going to cover for now. If you're ready to finalize your recording into a sound file continue on to the next tutorial or you can select one of the other levels you'd like to explore. If you're done for today click on the finale on how to save and close out your project. Go ahead and make your selection now.